Hello everyone. Uh, in the previous part of the lecture, uh, I had mentioned that under the conditions of isotropic material behavior, we have uh, this immense reduction from the 21 independent components of the elasticity tensor uh, to the two independent components. Now, uh, let's see how we can uh, have this kind of relationship coming up in a systematic fashion from the fourth order tensor. Okay, so for this we are going to use uh, a result from tensor algebra. Uh, so uh, isotropic behavior okay, or isotropy. So the result from tensor algebra is this that any general fourth order isotropic tensor can be expressed in terms of Kronecker deltas in this fashion. Okay. So C i j k l is equal to, so if C i j k l is a fourth order uh, isotropic uh, tensor, then it can be expressed as alpha delta i j delta k l plus beta delta i k delta j l plus gamma delta let me write that properly delta i l delta j k where alpha beta and gamma they are constants okay so this is the general result from tensor uh, algebra now we are not going to go into proof of this rather what uh, what you can do or what you will do is in the in the problem sheet of this chapter uh, you'll be asked to verify this result not prove this but verify that this is indeed isotropic so much in the same way that you did i think problem number uh, six in the mathematical preliminaries okay so that will give you a better feel of what this is all about now in terms of making the connection from the fourth order tensor to the isotropic tensor uh, uh, what we'll do is uh, first thing you note that we have mentioned previously that there are only two uh, constants, two independent constants. But here you are seeing that from tensor algebra it is telling us uh, that there are three independent constants. So what is going on here? So let's see that th although it is written as three, but indeed there are actually only two of them. Okay. So what do we do for that? Uh, the first step is uh, that we interchange the i and j okay so we interchange i and j so what we have is the j i a l is equal to alpha delta j i delta k l plus beta delta j k delta i l because we have to replace the i by the j wherever it appears and the j by the i wherever it appears delta j l delta i k all right now uh, we want to subtract these two things these two uh, equations okay so let's call this as uh, maybe star one and star 2 we want to uh, do star 1 minus star 2 you please note that on the left hand side of star 1 i have c i j k l on the left hand side of star 2 i have c j i k l but c i j k l is equal to c j i k l from the minor symmetries okay so what we'll have on the left hand side is 0 and here you please note that delta ij is very much equal to delta ji okay so these two terms also cancel what we have left is beta uh, now you note that this is delta ik this is delta jl this is delta ik this is delta jl so effectively what we can do is we can take this common with the gamma so beta minus gamma delta i k delta j l and here also you note 
that this delta i l is present here also delta i l together with delta j k which is also present here okay so we can write this as plus gamma minus beta delta i l delta j k now this equation that we have just obtained it must be true irrespective of our choice of the uh, indices now uh, please note the significance of this statement suppose you were to choose i equal to 1 a equal to let's say uh, let's say 3 j equal to 2 and l equal to 4 okay so this term would be 0 now i is 1 l is 4 this also becomes 0 okay so this is identically satisfied so, so no particular or fresh information is provided to us if we make that choice we can keep on making these choices okay but uh, and in most of them you will see that you end up with 0 equal to 0 so no problem no problem but no uh, uh, no usefulness also but suppose we were to take something like this that i equal to 1 a equal to 1 and j equal to 2 l equal to uh, 2 so let's try this suppose we take i equal to 1 a equal to 1 j equal to uh, well let's take uh, j equal to 2 and l equal to 2 so here also we should be doing the same thing so i equal to 1 l equal to 2 and we don't even have to worry about the rest of it because whenever the two indices of the chronicle delta are not equal this is the entire thing is going to be zero okay but anyway just let's write write this down j is 2 and k is 1 so this also is zero okay so overall this just goes away but this one you note it remains and very importantly it must be true uh, this relation must be true uh, as we have said irrespective of our choice of the indices and if that is so then the only conclusion that we can draw from here is that beta must be equal to gamma okay so in a similar fashion uh, if we go back to this first relation and then maybe we uh, interchange the j and l will also end up with again this kind of a relationship that beta is equal to gamma so overall as i had mentioned earlier what is indeed happening is that uh, although these are these were appearing as three independent constants alpha beta gamma but in reality as you have seen that beta is equal to gamma so indeed there are two independent constants uh, as i had mentioned in the uh, in the previous lecture so uh, let's write this down uh, in using just two constants uh, in the next page so c i j k l is equal to if we take a look at the previous page this is alpha delta i j delta k l alpha delta alpha delta i j delta k l plus beta we take it common with the third term delta i k delta j l delta i k delta j l plus delta i l delta j k plus delta i l delta j k right now this particular relationship is uh, what is describing the isotropic material behavior in addition to the to of course uh, the previous assumptions that it is a linear behavior that it is not uh, accounting for any rate or history effects and because we are dealing with constants here the, the assumption of uniformity or homogeneity is very much embedded within it but very importantly we have now also embedded within it the information from isotropy okay now usually when in the context of elasticity we don't use these uh, constants alpha and beta rather uh, we use two other constants it's just a convention that we use instead of alpha and beta we use lambda and g
Now, uh, if we were to use this particular relationship uh, in, in the material behavior, to so see ij kl epsilon kl, this relation, sigma ij connected to the epsilon kl, if we are to substitute this, okay, then what happens? Let's see that. This entire thing multiplied with epsilon kl. So for the first term, what we'll have is uh, this delta ij will remain as it is. Now this Kronecker delta, uh, it'll act to substitute these indices. So what we'll have is epsilon kk. Okay. So you can think of it like this l is getting substituted by this k. Okay. Uh, delta ij plus uh, t or c uh, this k here so this is going to get substituted by i and this l here this is going to get substituted by this j okay so what we'll have is epsilon i k similarly here we'll have so i'm just Expanding it out plus g, uh, or we can put this within bracket, no problem. This entire thing within bracket. Uh, here, this k is common here, so uh, it's going to get replaced by the j, and this l is going to get replaced by the i. So, this is epsilon j i. But we know that epsilon ij is equal to epsilon ji as always. So what we have effectively is this thing. Lambda epsilon kk delta ij plus twice g epsilon ij. And this is the relationship which we are looking for. And this will be utilized all throughout the rest of this course. Okay. Now you please note that in your earlier studies when you refer to the generalized Hooke's law you expressed the various components of the strains in terms of the stresses using the Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio and what we have obtained here is basically the stresses in terms of the strains now you please note that this is just a different form of the generalized Hooke's law okay just a different way of looking at the generalized Hooke's law that you learned in your uh, undergraduate days. Okay, and indeed in your problem sheet you will be asked to find out the connections between these two things. Okay, specifically what is the connection between lambda g and that uh, Young's modulus e and the Poisson's ratio nu. Okay, so with this uh, introduction uh, we have covered the theory part of the material behavior chapter uh, and you can uh, you can start doing the problems now all right with this we end uh, this chapter thank you very much